My brother-in-law confessed his love for my wife, but when he turned around and accused her of trying to start an affair, it set off a chain reaction that exposed a dark obsession no one could have predicted. Yesterday, out of the blue, my brother-in-law asked my wife if she could meet him for lunch. He said there was something he needed to talk to her about. When my wife told me about his invitation, she seemed puzzled but not overly concerned. Do you think it's about my sister? She asked, furrowing her brow. Maybe they're having problems, and he wants to get a woman's perspective on things. I found the whole situation odd. My brother-in-law had never reached out to my wife in this way before but he often texted her and other family members for mundane reasons, so I didn't think much of it. After all, we were a close-knit family, and it wasn't unusual for us to support each other through tough times. Go find out, I told her, shrugging off my initial unease. My wife agreed, deciding to meet him at a cafe near her office the next day. The next morning, as she was getting ready for work, she mentioned lunch again. I'm still not sure what this is about, she said, a hint of worry in her voice. I reassured her, saying it was probably nothing serious. Just listen to what he has to say, and if it's something we need to help with, we'll figure it out together, I said. It's a busy cafe, filled with the usual lunchtime crowd, and my wife feels a bit more at ease being in such a public setting. She arrives a bit early, finding a table near the window where she can keep an eye on the entrance. He arrives a few minutes later, looking more nervous than she's ever seen him. They exchange the usual pleasantries, talking about work and the kids for a few minutes. But then... As soon as their food arrives, he takes a deep breath and dives into what he really came to say. He starts by complimenting her, telling her how beautiful she looks. At first, she thinks he's just being polite, but then he keeps going. He tells her how she's always been the light in his life, how she makes him feel things he's never felt before. It was love at first sight, he says, his voice trembling slightly. I've loved you since the moment I first laid eyes on you. If you were mine, I would treat you like the queen you are. I'd give you everything you deserve. My wife is stunned. She stares at him, unable to believe what she's hearing. This man, my brother-in-law, married to my sister and father of their two kids, is pouring his heart out to her. He lays it on thick, making grand promises about how different life would be if they were together. He goes on, saying how he's been holding these feelings in for years, how he's watched her and admired her from afar, feeling more and more that they're meant to be together. She tries to interrupt, to tell him he's making a huge mistake, but he keeps talking over her, almost as if he's rehearsed this speech a thousand times in his head. Mind you, this man has always had a friendly relationship with my wife. Our families see each other often since we're a close-knit bunch. He's always been the fun uncle to our kids, the guy who's there at every family barbecue, every holiday dinner. He does text my wife frequently, but it's always been about mundane things, the kids' schedules, family events, things like that. Nothing overly sexual, nothing that would set off any alarms. In fact, he texts and calls my mom, too. They have a friendly report, and none of us ever thought anything of it. To us, he's always been just a good guy, someone we trust implicitly. So to hear my wife recount this to me is like a punch to the gut. My wife doesn't let him finish. She stands up, her chair scraping loudly against the floor, and walks out. She's shaking as she calls me, telling me everything that just happened. While she's on the phone with me, the texts from him start. First, it's apologies. He didn't mean it. He thinks it's only infatuation. He's sorry for making her uncomfortable. But the damage is done. She leaves work early to come home and talk to me about this, her phone buzzing incessantly with his calls and messages. I tell her to answer one of his calls to put him on speaker so I can hear. He's crying, begging her not to tell my sister. He keeps saying it was a mistake, that he misread signals, that he thought she felt the same way. Apparently, when we were together this past weekend, he thought my wife was flirting with him, that they had a moment alone in our kitchen where he felt a connection. My wife is a major ballbuster, and I suppose I can see how that can be taken as flirting. But this, this is beyond anything we could have imagined, he asks if she told me. And I answer yes, as I'm on speaker. Then he starts begging me too, pleading for us to keep this a secret. This went on for a while, him begging and us listening. My main question was whether he had cheated on my sister before. He swore he hadn't, swearing on his kids' lives that it was just my wife. He said I should understand that it was her, only her. At that point, I was done listening. I told him I wasn't going to do anything tonight and that I'd call him tomorrow. Now we're left with this mess, not knowing what to do next. My wife says we should drive over there right now and tell my sister, but the idea of wrecking my sister's family is killing me. Thinking about what this will do to my nieces makes me want to vomit. I know the right thing to do is to tell my sister, but I'm also thinking about my wife. It's not her fault, but there's sure to be resentment from my family. Even if my sister doesn't divorce him and they reconcile, I can't see how we'll ever be together again like we were before, if at all. This whole episode can tear my family apart. I don't give a shit about him. He tried to destroy my family, but I do care about everyone else. Update. So everyone that told me last night that I couldn't wait to tell my sister was right. A little after 12, I got a call from my sister. She sounded upset and said she had to tell me something. My heart sank as she explained that her husband, my brother-in-law, had come to her in tears, claiming my wife had tried to begin an affair with him. He spun a tale where my wife was the instigator, trying to shift the blame entirely onto her. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. I immediately told my sister that wasn't the case and assured her I would be right over. This situation needed to be addressed face to face, not over the phone. I hung up and, with a sense of urgency, called my parents. I woke my mother and father 
explaining what was happening in quick, clipped sentences. My father was furious, my mother sounded shocked but resolute. They agreed to head over to my sister's house to sit with her kids, offering the support she would desperately need right now. Next, I called my younger brother, he groggily answered. Confusion turning to alarm as I filled him in. He promised to come over to our place and stay with our kids, ensuring they wouldn't be left alone during this turmoil. His calm, steady presence would be a comfort to them. Meanwhile, my wife was already gathering her things, her face pale and drawn. She was dreading the confrontation, but knew it was necessary. We left the house in a hurry, the drive to my sister's place feeling longer than it actually was. The silence in the car was heavy, both of us lost in our thoughts. When we arrived, the scene was even more tense than I had imagined. My sister is out on the front porch with my brother-in-law when we get there. He looks beaten, eyes downcast, his posture slumped in defeat. He knows we have the texts and voicemails, the undeniable proof of his betrayal. I really don't know what he was hoping to accomplish by calling my sister in the middle of the night with his lies. Maybe he thought he could get ahead of the story, twist the narrative to save himself, but it was a futile effort. As we walk up to them, the tension in the air is palpable. My wife is trembling, her face a mask of controlled anger and hurt. She hands my sister her phone without a word. My sister takes it, her hands steady but her eyes burning with a mix of fury and pain. She scrolls through the texts, her expression hardening with each one she reads. Then she listens to the voicemails, the damning evidence of his declarations and her refusals. Before she can say anything, my brother-in-law starts sobbing. This is a man who runs into burning buildings, who faces danger daily without flinching. Seeing him like this, broken and vulnerable, is jarring. His cries are deep and guttural, raw with regret and fear. It's a scene that's almost surreal. A big tough firefighter brought to his knees by his own actions. My sister's face remains impassive, a mask of stern resolve. She's always been tough, but right now she's unyielding. She waits for him to finish, her silence more powerful than any words. When he finally quiets down, still hiccuping with the remnants of his sobs, she speaks. Pack a bag and go, she says, her voice cold and clear. I can't stand to look at you. He tries to argue, to plead his case, but she's having none of it. Stop it, she snaps, cutting through his words. There's nothing you can say that will make this better. She turns away from him, walks over to my wife, and pulls her into a hug. It's a moment of solidarity between them, a small comfort in the middle of this nightmare. They've been friends since college, and the strength of their bond is evident. It's a relief to see that, despite everything, they're standing together. This leaves me standing with my brother-in-law. He's a wreck, his face red and swollen from crying, his shoulders slumped. He looks at me, his eyes pleading for some kind of understanding or forgiveness, but I have none to offer. He tries to speak, his voice cracking, but I cut him off. You need to leave, I say firmly. This is your mess. You need to deal with the consequences. He nods, defeated, and slowly makes his way inside to pack his things. My sister stays with my wife, the two of them talking quietly, leaning on each other for support. The rest of the night is a blur of conversations and plans. We all rally around my sister, helping her figure out what to do next, how to protect her kids from the fallout. My sister begins questioning my wife, trying to understand why her husband thought any of this could possibly work out. He must have had some reason to believe she reciprocated his feelings. My sister insists that there hadn't been any issues in their marriage, everything had been normal. My wife is crying at this point, tears streaming down her face as she tries to make sense of the situation. There's nothing you haven't seen, she says her voice shaking. She hands my sister her phone again, and together they painstakingly go through every text message sent over the past two years. They read each one carefully, looking for any hint of inappropriate behavior, but there's nothing there. My wife was just being herself. She has a playful personality, always joking around and teasing. It's part of what makes her so lovable and approachable. My brother-in-law has a similar sense of humor, and they've always teased each other in a lighthearted, harmless way. She does the same with my mom and my younger brother. It's just how she interacts with people. The only incident my wife can think of that might have been misconstrued happened this weekend. She recounts it, trying to pinpoint where things went wrong. They were all together at our place, and she and my brother-in-law both reached for the fridge at the same time. They playfully jostled for who would get there first, laughing as they did so. He let her win, but then he reached around her waist to grab a beer, moving his hand slowly. She admits that in that moment, the way he did it felt a little inappropriate. It was a fleeting feeling, and she brushed it off, not wanting to make a big deal out of it. She wonders now if her silence gave him some misguided hope. My sister listens, her expression softening. She doesn't blame my wife for any of this. She knows her well enough to understand that her playful nature isn't an invitation for anything more. It's not your fault, she reassures her, and my wife nods, though the guilt still lingers. As they finish reading through the messages, it's clear there was never any mutual attraction, no hidden signals or secret flirtations. My wife was just being herself and my brother-in-law took that and twisted it into something it wasn't. The realization that this misunderstanding has caused so much pain is almost too much to bear, but at least for now my sister's belief in my wife remains intact. So then my sister starts going through his MacBook to see what else she doesn't know about. She's angry and frantic at this point, her hands shaking as she types. She guesses the password and on the third try she's in. With a deep breath, she starts searching through his files, looking for anything that might shed more light on this nightmare. It doesn't take long before she finds something disturbing. There, buried in a folder labeled innocuously, 
are a lot of pictures of my wife. They date back years and what's more unsettling is that they're always isolated shots, just her, never in group settings or candid family moments. My sister clicks through them, her anger turning into a cold, creeping horror. One set of photos stands out. A few years ago, we went on a couple's trip to the Caribbean. It was a rare vacation without the kids, and my wife, feeling more relaxed in the adults-only environment, had worn a bikini. She usually doesn't, preferring more modest swimwear, but this time she had felt comfortable enough to do so. There were probably 50 pictures of her in that bikini, each one taken without her knowledge. My sister's face pales as she scrolls through them. It's clear he's been secretly snapping these photos for years, collecting them obsessively. The realization that he's been harboring this fixation, lurking in the shadows of family events, sends a shiver down her spine. Does this now enter restraining order territory? She wonders aloud, her voice barely above a whisper. This has taken a creepy turn, far beyond what any of us had imagined. The boundary between inappropriate and outright disturbing has been crossed. She calls us over, showing us the pictures. My wife gasps, her hand flying to her mouth in shock. She had no idea he was doing this, no inkling of his obsession. My sister, her anger now tempered by a deep sense of betrayal, starts talking about next steps. Legal action, protection for her kids, and a restraining order. All possibilities that need to be considered now. We're all reeling from this new discovery. The man we thought we knew, who we trusted as a husband, a father, and a brother-in-law, has shown a side of himself that's dark and disturbing. It's not just a matter of infatuation anymore, it's something far more insidious. Unfortunately, the mess continues. My sister agreed to talk to her husband last night and let him explain himself. She was determined to get the full story and decided to involve my wife directly to ensure there would be no lying or half-truths. They set up a FaceTime call with my wife, and I listened in off-camera, my heart pounding with a mix of anger and dread. My sister, ever thorough, recorded the entire conversation for good measure. As soon as the call began, the tension was palpable. My brother-in-law looked exhausted, his eyes red-rimmed and swollen from crying. He started hesitantly, his voice shaky, but as he spoke, the truth began to pour out, and the story unfolded in a way none of us had fully anticipated. He admitted he's been obsessed with my wife for years. It started the day I met her, he confessed, his voice barely above a whisper. He went on to explain that it was during one of those early gatherings where my sister, eager to introduce her new boyfriend to her friends, had brought him along. My wife and I were dating at the time, but he had met her before he met me. At first, he thought his feelings were purely physical, an innocent crush that he could brush aside. But as time went on and he spent more time around her, he realized it was more than that. He became fixated on her personality, her laughter, the way she interacted with everyone around her. He described moments where he found himself watching her captivated by her presence, even as she was just being herself, playful and kind. He detailed how he had tried to suppress these feelings, convincing himself that they were harmless. But over time, his obsession grew. He started finding ways to be near her more often, volunteering to help with family events, making excuses to text her about trivial things. It was a slow, insidious process that eventually led to the point where he felt compelled to confess his feelings, deluding himself into believing she might feel the same way. My sister listened, her face a mask of controlled rage and heartbreak. She didn't interrupt him, letting him dig his own grave with each word. My wife, on the other hand, was visibly shaken. Hearing how long this had been going on, how deeply his obsession ran, was almost too much for her to bear. When he finished, there was a heavy silence. My sister finally spoke, her voice icy and measured. What made you think that my wife would leave me for you? She asked, her eyes boring into his. He stammered, struggling to find the right words. He mentioned the supposed mutual attraction, the moments he had misinterpreted as signs of her reciprocation. My wife and sister exploded at that point, their pent-up anger and frustration spilling over. There was a lot of cussing, a lot of screaming, the raw emotion of betrayal and hurt coming to the forefront. My wife hung up the call, her hands trembling, her face pale. She was concerned for me for us, assuring me repeatedly that the attraction was one-sided. I believed her. I always had. Even if she did find him physically attractive at some point, I knew she would never act on it. She's serious about trust and fidelity, something she made clear early on in our relationship. This whole ordeal was a twisted fantasy of my brother-in-law's, a dangerous delusion that had nearly torn our family apart. The tension that had been building up during the call finally erupted into a storm of cussing and screaming. My wife's voice was a mix of fury and hurt while my sister's was steely and unforgiving. The barrage of emotions was overwhelming, the air thick with betrayal and disbelief. The phone call abruptly ended when my wife, shaking and distraught, hung up because she was concerned for me. She turned to me, her eyes wide with fear and confusion. It was one-sided, she assured me, her voice trembling. I never thought it wasn't, I replied trying to soothe her. Even if she did find him physically attractive at some point, I knew she would never act on it. She's just not that type of person. Early on in our relationship, there was a moment that encapsulated her stance on trust and fidelity perfectly. I remember watching her one morning as she was dressing, admiring her without saying a word. She noticed, gave me a teasing smile, and asked if I liked what I saw. But then her expression turned serious, almost cold. Never fuck up, she said, her tone leaving no room for misunderstanding. Or you'll never see this again. 
She meant every word. My wife is serious about trust. Once it's broken, it's almost impossible to mend. As I sat there replaying the chaotic scene in my mind, I couldn't help but reflect on my brother-in-law. I knew he was a little cocky, always walking with a certain swagger, but my god, I never knew he thought so highly of himself to believe he could pull off something like this. His delusions of grandeur were staggering, completely detached from reality. I talked to my sister later on, once the initial shock had started to wear off and we could speak more calmly. She was resolute, determined to protect her children from the fallout of her husband's actions. She told me she would be contacting a lawyer first thing Monday morning to see what steps she could take to limit his exposure to their kids. She wanted to ensure that they were shielded from as much of this mess as possible. As far as I'm concerned, he's detached from reality, she said, her voice steely with resolve. Her concern was no longer about saving her marriage but about safeguarding her children and maintaining a semblance of stability for them. Anyway, my brother-in-law returned home yesterday not because my sister wants him back but because she can't legally stop him. Despite the turmoil and the clear betrayal, he has the right to be in the house until the legal proceedings move forward. The atmosphere is tense and uncomfortable, filled with unspoken words and palpable resentment. They are done, and I think he realizes that now. There's a hollow look in his eyes, as if he understands that any hope he had of salvaging their marriage is gone. The lawyer tells my sister that since my brother-in-law's behavior over the past few days has been documented, there is a good chance she will be granted full custody of the kids. The texts, voicemails, and the disturbing cache of photos all paint a clear picture of his obsession and instability. He doesn't seem to even want to fight her on that. It's as if he knows he's lost everything and is too weary to put up a battle. My sister will be fine. She's stronger than she looks, and any love she had for him is gone. She moves through the house with a determined air, her focus now entirely on her children and their future. She doesn't seem to be broken up about it. Rather, she looks like someone who's finally seen the truth and is ready to move forward. The kids don't know what happened yet. They sense something is wrong. Kids always do, but they don't know the details. My brother-in-law was never around much anyway when the kids were home. He often slept at the fire station, pulling double shifts and overtime. His absence was a constant in their lives, a silent but ever-present gap that they had grown used to. But it is certain to be hard on them once they know what's going to happen. The stability of their home, the presence of both parents, even if it was fractured, will change. My sister is prepared for this. She's already spoken to a child psychologist to help them navigate the inevitable questions and emotions that will arise. She's ready to be both mother and father to provide them with the love and support they'll need. As for my brother-in-law, he stays in the guest room, a silent figure in a house that no longer feels like his home. He seems resigned to his fate, going through the motions but devoid of any real fight. It's a sad, pitiful sight, but my sympathy is limited. Some of my friends have said that there must be more women, that someone as obsessive as my brother-in-law couldn't have fixated on just one person. But as far as we can tell, there hasn't been anyone else. It's really just the obsession with my wife. His fixation on her has been singular and intense, leaving no room for anyone else. After everything came to light, my wife blocked his phone number, trying to create some distance and protect herself from his unwanted advances. But on the same night he returned home, he sent my wife an email from an account he had just made. It started with a seemingly sincere apology, but it quickly took a turn into something much darker. He began by saying he never got to finish at the restaurant that day, implying there was more he needed to confess. Then he launched into paragraphs and paragraphs about all the things he loves about my wife. He detailed the desperation he felt, the overwhelming emotions that had driven him to act so irrationally. He recounted every little detail he admired about her, her smile, her laugh, the way she interacted with others. It was unsettling, to say the least, to see his obsession laid out so starkly. He mentioned their supposed mutual attraction again, insisting that there was a palpable sexual tension between them that he had always felt. He was delusional, mistaking her friendly, playful nature for something more. He painted a picture of a connection that existed only in his mind, a fantasy that he had convinced himself was real. The email ended with a rather large section about me. Let's just say I didn't know he had such a low opinion of me. He was quite certain that I was not satisfying my wife properly. He criticized everything from my appearance to my demeanor, implying that I was somehow unworthy of her. His words were meant to undermine me, to sow seeds of doubt and insecurity. Reading the email was a gut punch. It was clear that his obsession with my wife had twisted his perceptions and fueled his disdain for me. He saw me as an obstacle, someone unworthy of the woman he had placed on a pedestal. But instead of feeling threatened, it only solidified my resolve to protect my wife and my family from his delusions. We forwarded the email to my sister and her lawyer. It was more evidence of his unstable state of mind, another piece of the puzzle that showed just how far gone he was. This email, with its mix of apology, obsession, and vitriol, might be enough to get him removed from the house permanently. For now, my wife and I are taking it one day at a time. The support from our friends and family has been invaluable, helping us navigate the surreal and painful situation. Finally, my wife isn't doing great, but she is improving each day. She does feel guilty for being too comfortable around my brother-in-law. Normally, she is very careful about setting boundaries with other men. In case it wasn't clear, my wife is quite stunning and receives a lot of male attention. However, she felt safe around my brother-in-law because he was family, 
and she never thought he would cross any lines. Fortunately, she and my sister are on good terms, and there doesn't seem to be any resentment which is a relief. We will all be okay, but it will take time. Thank you to everyone who commented and offered their support. My primary concern throughout this was my sister and her children. The impact of my brother-in-law's actions on their lives is immense. Ensuring their protection and emotional well-being became our priority. Children, especially, need shielding from such toxic situations to maintain their sense of security and normalcy. When faced with such a situation, it's essential to act quickly and decisively. We didn't hesitate to gather evidence, confront the issue, and involve legal help to ensure the safety and well-being of everyone involved. Procrastination or denial could have led to further harm. What do you think about this story? Please share your comments down below. 